uh, Sanele, do you consider yourself an, art, an, an activist? Is that sort of a, a, a driving force in what you are doing? Um, I consider myself as a visual activist, so I use visuals uh, to articulate my own issues that affect mainly lesbians, gay, bisexuals, and transgender people um, who are black um, at the height of hate crimes in South Africa specifically, and also speaking from a period where we're talking uh, post-apartheid South Africa the meaning of that, and also um, trying, by all means, not alone, of course, um, uh, with participants in my work, um, I, like the people that I photograph, they are participants, they're helping us to produce a new history, a visual history, because South Africa is known for its visuality. South Africa is known for being gender conscious, a country which is um, democratic, but also at the same time having the best you know, constitution in the world, which I perceive is even better than yours, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that, that you're going into political details. I, 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 that's very hard for, for us to judge uh, unless we have studied the thing. But I was, I mean, I've been visiting South Africa quite a long time ago, and in a period when of, of violent transition uh, in the 90s, when uh, going from apartheid to, to something else. And, it, uh, and that uh, transitional period was in many ways exciting and at the same time quite violent. But that, uh, you could also say that it was a period which was very much like uh, the conflict uh, lines were pretty clear in a way, okay, pretty clear, because there was, uh, was a, a, a society ridding itself of uh, its... its uh, uh, former oppressive system, but I, I have a feeling uh, that uh, I mean the activism as such was very much about that particular very generalized political situation. But you talk about a different sort of of, of activism, which is not any more straightforwardly about race barriers, but uh, some invisible barriers and maybe even new barriers. I don't know, uh, because I mean, there was a very little focus on transgender communities at in the 90s, for instance, because there was other issues to focus on. Would you say that, that the, 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 the forms that activism take in South Africa, from your perspective, have been changing? That's your, sort of your, almost your lifespan, from childhood to adulthood. Um, when we talk about like transition and transformation in any space, talking about like distinctions of race, like where we come from, from apartheid South Africa to a period where South Africans and people around the world had to suffer um, when we lost our beloved through HIV AIDS pandemic and that those were the 90s um, and up till now maybe, but then due to um, change, at least we have access to medication and people could live longer. So we, we're moving from apartheid South Africa to a period of people losing their lives and families um, mourning the, the loss of their beloved. And now we're at a period where we're talking about LGBTI rights and LBG, L, LGBTI uh, 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 movement as a whole. We're talking about what was on the table as an issue of discussion. But yet at the same time, in as much as there were those decision, uh, discussions, the historians and maybe the politicians had their own you know, topical subject matter that they had to deal with. Now we're at a period where we say, we acknowledge what has happened in the past. We acknowledge all of these uh, transitions. Now we've been there for the longest period. And it still speaks on lines of race because my focus is mainly on black LGBTIs in space due to the fact that some of the politicians or some of those who are in power, they clearly dismiss the fact that we're there. Even those who acknowledge it's like, it's not enough if it's not written down. It's not enough if we can't have access to galleries, if we can't have resources to produce our own histories and also visuals that speaks to the particular change. And it's not enough if we can't 
enter spaces where culture is an issue of concern. Talking about the museums, talking about academia, it's not enough. Looking at the high population size that is in space, you know? And when I said earlier on, having the best constitution, I mean it, in terms of like we have the right to express our sexual, uh, sexualities, we have a right to express our gender. And unlike in other countries in Africa or within the continent where people cannot even dare to say that they are there due to uh, the backlash and anti-homosexuality bills posed to them. Unlike other countries abroad where people do not all the states have rights to marry, in other instances, America, they just legalize you know, same-sex marriages to all states. Mm -hmm. We're talking of countries abroad, like we know the situation in Russia, do you understand? that's when our constitution is relevant. Maybe couples in other different countries abroad, lesbians can't have right to adoptions or same-sex couples can't have right to adoptions. Um, same-sex couple can't even uh, give in the same rights uh, like everybody when it comes to sexual reproductive rights. People have to negotiate a space when they want to have IVF or when they, ha when they need to have artificial insemination. In South Africa, there are also those positive, you know, uh, 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 strategies or lines that allow people to be who they are and make choices. The right to same-sex spouse in terms of like accessing your pension and even include your partner in your medical aid. That means a lot. But the biggest challenge that we have had over the past few years is hate crimes where a lot of lives are lost. Let's return to that later, and, and because we are have uh, this hour here, and, and I will just uh, give the word to to uh, Kent Klich, uh, who uh, Klich, sorry, who is a uh, uh, renowned photographer and also with a, a strong engagement with uh, uh, the conditions of people. Like, would you like to just develop? I mean, uh, do you consider yourself as as an activist in your photographic practice? Well, I, I, think, I think there are two words that come to me. And one is the concern, and the other word is injustice. So if you are concerned about something and uh, it's not just, then you become an activist. And I've been working in, uh, where I live in Copenhagen, uh, make several projects that I also worked abroad. So, the, for example, in, in Denmark, I worked with one woman. I made like three books and I made one film together with her and she was at the time when I met her a, a drug addict and a prostitute. So of course you can say well how much activism is this because it's one person but I think that I think by still being her friend and we've still been working together and her changes and the way she's been able to talk about her changes in the Danish society I hope at least that it helped change the view of both a woman and the reasons why she was taking drugs and then you know trying to understand a little bit more about a person that we usually don't know so much about. And recently with the work in, in Gaza, it's also like a deep feeling of uh, total injustice. These people are confined there, they stay there, they have no way out, it's not fair. So um, by being there and coming back and you know making friends and you know you study, you learn at the same time, even if you're a foreigner, I mean you always have to admit that you are kind of you don't know really what you're talking about when you come down there but if you agree on that and then in discussions you try to say some things about life there so in a sense you become an activist by showing the work by the books and exhibitions but also by actually remember after operation cast led just by being in gaza was actually to be an activist because people were so it had been such a hard time so a foreigner coming and showing interest for their lives, and I stayed with families at that time, I mean, they were just happy for someone from abroad showing an interest coming from the outside. And at the same time, with also actually helping changing the, the image of the Palestinians from, you know, like women crying, weapons, you know, the image of the Palestinian as a terrorist, and actually discussing that with my counterparts, like Palestinian Center for Human Rights, and saying this is the image that is shown, for example, especially in the United States at the time. So I think, you know, it would be good, and that's why I want to show the private homes, which I did in the book Gaza Photo Albums. So they thought a lot about that, and they started including 
on their website, they started including like personal stories, not only the facts and the figures, but they talked about you know this family and what happened to this family. So, in one sense, I think that if you're really concerned, I think you almost you become an, an activist. And how about uh, you, uh, Drew? I mean, you, you uh, you're probably the, the name and the face that is most familiar to the mo most people here around. Because you are, uh, you you've been creating a, a quite quite a few headlines uh, over time, but that has been in, in quite different uh, different lines of uh, activity. Because you are a musician, experimental musician, I'm well known for that. You are uh, an artist, and you have uh, created quite headlines as an artist as well. And then, of course, uh, in recent years, you've been uh, heading, at least from a Swedish perspective, uh, the the ships for Gaza, and and. Um, would you say that that uh, I, I, do I understand you right that, that actually the driving force between and behind all of this is a form of activism from your part? Uh, of course, yes. Uh, I would say, like uh, Kent have said here, the the will to to make injustice less present, because I don't think I will we will succeed to get justice, but make injustice, less present, this is the root of activism. I you always um, quote, I think that also art by itself, in its form, in its complexity, in its way to show things, in itself is a form of activism. Because you somehow make people to think, hear, sing, dance in another way. When you dare to do something in another way that it's expected from you, then you are on the path of activism, then you are in the path of being a possible a member of groups who want to change the things how they are. In 1752, the editor of the encyclopedia, first encyclopedia, D'Alembert, wrote a little booklet about the freedom of music. And he said like this, all forms of freedom are bound together. The freedom of music starts the freedom of the feeling, starts the freedom of the thinking, starts the freedom of acting. And freedom of acting is the enemy number one of the state. So if you want to keep the monarchy, don't change the form of the opera. <laughs> so, you know, it is a little bit it's, uh, funny, but if you think about it, when you start to question a small thing, somewhere, here and there, then, and if you, against all odds, succeed to change it, then you get the drive. Then I must say that in my, for example, on Ship to Gaza, I was, uh, from the first time, 2010, when we were on our way to Gaza, I was uh, involving art in it. I tried to make a performance on the boat with three video cameras to film it and to take it back. Uh, the Israelis attacked the boat, killed nine people, uh, take the, all the films. One, we succeed to smuggle out. From this, I made a work of art that is a work of art that is documentation of activism, that is also a performance during the activism. This is one thing. The second thing, 2004, as you mentioned before, the Israeli ambassador in Sweden attacked our art. I made him to an activist. Our work of art made him an activist. He was an activist, a very bad one, uh, from my point of view, but he showed that art has the power of making people act. And this is, I think, is what uniting all these people on this photo uh, festival or whatever it's called, this is uniting us because we believe that visuals, sounds, movements, words, all of them can make us into activists and make others into activists. So I think that the, the, bo the, the line between activists and artists is very, very uh, thin. Bertolt Brecht said, uh, once that, of course, you can write a, a poem about the rain falling during a dictatorship. This is activism too. But it is activism in the wrong way because you decide to go back, not to write about the situation because you are afraid of yourself. Activism is not always uh, positive. It depends who and what. So we're, I think this is important to speak about it too. Yes, and we will. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I'd like to comment on that as well because I had the pleasure to work with a really fantastic artic artist in re the rec recent years, uh, some uh, since some ten years back, uh, whose name is Gustav Metzger, 
and uh, he he's a, an artist who actually uh, never made a real difference between activism and art. He uh, started out as an artist in the 1940s, and but at the same time he was an environmental activist, trying to rescue a city center in uh, some some small town in in England. And uh, later he became an activist against the, the nuclear, um, uh, well, for nuclear disarmament. And uh, uh, he continued being, uh, being an, an activist throughout his, his uh, art. But I would also say that it, it requires a certain consistency. I mean, there's a lot of people who claim to be active, uh, who claim opinions. But that doesn't really necessarily make them activists, because it's one thing to take a photograph, but I think it's also uh, uh, another th thing to take the consequences of a photograph, or m create consequences of your artwork. And, and uh, so I just throw the ball back to uh, drawer, because I, I think that's uh, something that you could maybe comment on, because it's not just about Doing a making a performance. It's not just about making an exhibition, but it's actually making uh, create the sort of events that follow, or at least uh, creating this sort of energy that makes things happen due to your activism or your art. Of course. <coughs> Hello. Uh, it's very strange. Hello. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a performance. No, I'm sure. Uh, of course, it is like, like you said, consistency is very important. But I think that sometimes uh, one act can trigger so many other acts that even if you only did this act, you become the igniter of something greater. This is possible. But of course, uh, con if you continue to do, and if people see a line going through, a red thread through everything you do, in my case, in music or art or really political activism on, on, on the line, then I think people um, uh, understand that art and activism can be one. If I, like I was doing, standing with the people in, in the West Bank demonstrating against the wall, standing in front line with a saxophone and playing saxophone, they realize that artists, they don't only sit in their, in their ivory tower. They also on front line together with them. the same like them, just we have other measure, to a other means to express what they do also. I think this is very important that, that artists uh, should be together with the people. We will be with them, because if we are only uh, sometimes come to visits, it is not enough. Uh, if Kent, like he has done now, coming since, since 2008, 2001 to Gaza, so of course, it's accumulated knowledge, it's accumulated feeling, it's accumulated knowledge from them that he is coming, that we here know their situation. It is a circle that is going again and again. So of course, to continue is important. But I must say that uh, in the end, I would always, people ask, I am also, I have worked in politics. So people ask me always, uh, you, uh, can you do politics with arts? I say, no, politics you do with politics. Art you do is art. Activism is this in between. Because activism is not politics. It's acting, like when we do art. It's acting, but it's acting in a slightly different way. We can sometimes use our art, sometimes not using our art, but it is in this sphere. When you work with politics, it's something different. Then you have other measures. You can use your art, but it's not the same way. Yes, 
Yes, I, I comment on that on a text which is somewhere in maybe on the web page or something that actually the activist has to t take ideas into action. Otherwise, you are not really an activist. You are actually maybe a politician, maybe a spokesperson. Uh, I don't know what, but but you need to like push it uh, wider. So that's why I, I, I mean I make this movement backwards again. So uh, Kent, what's the difference between you? as a photographer uh, compared to anyone else making feature photographs from Lebanon or elsewhere. Uh, because, I mean, you have, there's a loads of images being produced. And, 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 and uh, how do you, uh, would you, uh, because I, I, I just assume that there's a, maybe a different sort of engagement, but I, I give the word to you. Well, um, I think I think again the question is uh, concern and the and the time you know I don't play the saxophone I play the the the, f the camera right so I cannot stand you know in front of the wall and, and and playing with if I should play with my with my camera I should come back and I should actually use I mean the camera is really just a tool I mean the whole thing is about understanding and how to do something that with the knowledge that you um, that you obtain and usually, especially if you come to a culture which is not your own, that means you have to form a lot of alliances, and you have to learn a lot, and you have you question a lot uh, your own role. You know, like I would say, like when you come to Gaza, for example, as a man, when can you be alone with uh, with a woman in a room? Well, actually, you can be alone as a man with 50 women in one room, but it's only at a, fu at a funeral. So of course, this affects your way of working. So you have, you know, you. By working, you also start seeing yourself. I mean, you start seeing, you know, what is the problems, what can you do? So then you start talking to people, and if you're concerned, I mean, this is the thing about the spending time. It's actually the way you learn about a thing. You see the problems from the outside. I mean, when you come from the outside, it's good because you can actually give some knowledge to some people which are inside, and you gain knowledge about there. And in, and in this meeting, then <coughs> situations are being created where hopefully uh, the work will be important work about the situation there, but it also will be a comment about, you know, for example, about media, the role of media. I mean, just a f simple thing. If I talk to photographers in Gaza, for example, and we discuss, you know, why are the pictures always violent? So they say to me, yes, Kent, but you know, I always try to sell other kind of stories about the family and about ordinary life, but there's no one who wants to buy them. So they have to survive. So by surviving, they sell the images, the images which are asked for, right? So you can say, I'm a little bit privileged because I can, you know, by different ways of spending time and, and uh, whatever grants or by other work I do, I have the possibility of, of showing this work which uh, they cannot show or sometimes where, where there is not like a commercial market for it. And that's where the art comes in, because that's the books, that's the exhibitions, and then it also trickles in back to the, the, the magazines and the news, and it becomes comments about journalism at the same time. So it's a strange kind of road where it kind of, the work from Gaza works on both the art level to, to newspapers, magazines, and it's published all over the place, even from winning a world press prize. Yes. I would like just to comment, because uh, Kent is speaking about alliances. When your first book came about Gaza, Gaza Photo Album, when the people in the Stockholm Mosque were ready to support it and have it, uh, 100 uh, copies, to give it as present to people who visit the mosque, suddenly you create an impossible alliance with people who, as a matter of fact, don't like picturing of anything they realize the power of the art, the power of the empty room, the power of, of, the, of, his, of Kent's photos, and make it part of their own culture. This is a very important step. So, so I mean, by doing art together with other people, this is fantastic. This is activism. Uh, what is the difference between your work and uh, social engaged photography in general? My approach has always uh, been from an insider's perspective, from an insider's point of view. I live within my community. Um, I understand the stories of those people that I live with, and I grew up with them. Um, that makes it maybe uh, that's make a huge like difference. Cause 
I always find it like strange to photograph from a distance and not knowing the people. It's always difficult, especially as a female body being, you know, you're entering spaces that are already risky. And by the time you enter those spaces, you're already judged, you know, there are spaces that you cannot enter um, as, a, as a female person. Most people, they know that I'm out. And then sometimes I walk in a space and people, they know that, oh, here's this lesbian. Da, 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 da. So you have to be super careful. And when you enter within those spaces, you're coming there as a photographer, not as a female. So I keep on saying to people, photography has nothing to do with gender. So that's when it differs, because you have a lot of uh, uh, spaces that are open to photographers. But the minute you project maybe your gender, it means it's changing the whole scope. You have to speak out. You have to be aware that you're entering a space with men. You have to respect. You have to re uh, dress in a certain way. And then kind of like remove your sexuality. So there are spaces that were risky. That uh, my friend, uh, who just recently <laughs> won an award the day before, where we entered carefully and cautiously. And it meant that we had to um, be friends with people around that area before we enter such zones. So I'll say for many, maybe female photographers, there's that whole point of like, who are you within this, those settings and what you have to say and the kind of project that you could uh, produce. Um, the, the project of Kent seemed like very, very important. So what I'm thinking of like, maybe it might be uh, my, my race, my gender, my sexuality might not allow me to be in such a space because first of all, maybe the laws decriminalizes uh, homosexuals in those areas, and one has to be super careful. Two, women dress a certain way. Three, a black female entering such space where maybe there is racism, layered with homophobia, layered with xenophobia, layered with many unjust situations that you spoke about. That's what makes me different within those spaces. Whereas if maybe I come and shoot here in Europe, in Malmo, in, in Stockholm, you already have right then it positions me differently and in a safe way. There are no goals on areas in different African parts where I can't even dare be there because I'll obviously be taking risk. That's when it differs, you know? So I think that for me, it's that whole thing of like striving to survive, being cautious at all times, and always careful about the people that I photograph, not to put them at risk and also not to put me at risk. We speaking from a position in South Africa where we're trying to write a new visual uh, history. So now the point is who to photograph, how to photograph those people within those settings. If a person is under age and is in the closet, I cannot photograph that person because I might be talking on like further risk. That's a different positionality. And then the issue of like what is in the media what's published, what's not published, what could be seen, what cannot be seen, always need one to be super cautious. So that's how different uh, it is. And also end up being called names and uh, being labeled by some mainstream media. Because there was a period where I was an Elim Holy, the controversial lesbian photographer. And I was th thinking to myself, what is controversy? How all of a sudden do I become controversial when I'm trying to say that? I've seen a lot of people's history projected in mainstream spaces. I don't see us, I don't see me, I don't see images of black lesbians and trans people and, 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 and gay people in space. Whatever that is out there is not captured by us. So all I was trying to do was to be responsible or to act as a responsible citizen. Also that kind of like displace you in so many cases sometimes not getting like resources to produce work because already the person who's in charge of whatever fund thinks, okay, we don't need to see this. We can't even listen to this. And yet we're there paying taxes like everybody. So it's been like difficult, but also at the same time, one had to find a way in which we maneuver different spaces. And, uh, in, so you sort of address something that that I I've been reflecting a, a bit on, and that that's uh, well giving a thought to this idea of of, of a panel on active activism, is, and that is that I mean uh, activism is in itself built on an idea of counterculture. It it means that there has to be a defining culture that you 
sort of face off or you, you sort of uh, start to, to uh, deconstruct or attack or, or uh, sub, uh, uh, intervene in anyhow to, to create a sort of different perception of whatever ideas you are sort of like promoting or pushing or the change you want to and, and, and uh, maybe I just jump to Kent just for a while and we return to you Tanele uh, later but, but uh, how would you define the, the culture that you are actually countering because I would say that all activism is built on a sort of a, uh, if not an idea so there has to be there has to be a culture to counteract. Well, it, it, it's very, I mean, in, that is the, the injustice of uh, 1.8 million people being confined to a very, very small area, one-fourth of Irland, with not possibilities of leaving, not going studying, very few possibilities actually of going out of, of Gaza. Most of the people, or a lot of the people, worked outside in Tel Aviv and around, but then they were stopped to doing that. And I met that already in 2001 when I spoke to uh, Saraj, the, the head of uh, the Gaza Mental Health Program, because at that time they had even Israeli psychiatrists coming over to help with the mental situation with the Gaza Mental Health Program. And uh, he said, but it was stopped by the uh, Israeli authorities. And I said, Wow, this this is really incredible. So there is a kind of clear division, and then you have the you have the wall on the West Bank, but I mean around Gaza, I mean they are confined. So of course, why this work? Because this feeling of a deep, deep injustice, and it's not fair, and that's uh, basically the reason to work there. I think. And how about what what what, what is the culture you are I I don't agree on your okay. assumption, because I think that even bringing culture. That is not the counterculture. Bringing culture to people who are not confronted with culture, who have no possibility to reach to culture, who have never been exposed to culture, this is a counteract. And then, you, uh, of course, I can call this system of excluding some people, from m most of the people from good culture, this is kind of culture. Okay, then I agree with you. But for me, the act of bringing culture to people who are not exposed to culture, this is a counteract, this is activism. For me, to like yesterday, I was reading in the demonstration in Stockholm a poem by a Palestinian poet, Rayat al-Madhun, to people who never have ever thought about buying his book, and they will never, they don't know his name, they know how to say his name. But after he read it in Arabic, and I read it in Swedish, he is a Palestinian, I am b born in Israel, when we did it together about the uh, problems in Syria, about the problem in the Middle East, people came to him and asked, where can we buy the book? This is an activism. This is cultural activism, and it has also, also political connotation. And I think that this is the most important, that we, like you said, we are not exposed there. We want to show the culture that is there. It is not against. We want, I don't want to destroy the culture with you. I want to add to it what it needs to be added, that it will be right to call it culture. It will be right to call it culture of us together. This is the, the activism act. And this is exactly what to do with justice. Because justice is somehow, we have to share what we have. This is experience, culture, food, money, freedom of movement, uh, freedom of sexuality, all this. This is what we have to share. And this act is activism. And we can do it in a thousand different ways. And, um, of course, the ones who have the power, the ones who have the privilege, they don't like that we tell them, please, give it away. So, as a matter of fact, I come back, then in a way you are right, but in, in many ways you are wrong. Yeah. And I totally agree, and that's because of the word culture is, in yeah. fact, uh, uh, in many ways, unpractical and uh, very often inappropriate, because it covers a number of, of uh, even contradictory things football including and excluding, yogurt. if you want to, yogurt and so forth. So anyhow, but uh, uh, so then what, what would, would you say? I mean, if you describe, or if you, uh, I mean, you might agree or not, but is there a sort of a culture that you try to counteract, or uh, is it like Draw uh, says, that you actually just want to add something that's missing into the mix of things? 
Um, or into the lives of people that are there? Let's first say art is about education. Education, education is key because if we mix those cultures, we learn something from each other. So in that way, we're destabilizing any kind of form of hierarchies that are put in place by those who believe that these cultures shouldn't mix. You know, we could regard photography as uh, another cultural space in which we articulate issues that affect people around the world. And we speak with one voice or one language because in as much as I might not know about Ken's work, of which I know, <laughs> through uh, uh, work, uh, it it, it kind of like connects with uh, between music, the dance, the visuals, the mix. That cultural mix is already there. But then the question is, how willing are we to listen? Are we willing to listen to each other? Um, do I have maybe some time or some moments in which I listen to what Drew has to say, even if I do not understand his instruments? But listening is very 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 important that what make people clash if people do not understand or listen to each other that when the confusion you know begins but if we say what is culture culture is basic let's accommodate each other let's treat the space in an amicable way before we bring layers of gender of sexuality of race um and and undoing difference so like I said, culture is about language, culture is about human beings. Education as education is key in order for everybody to get the grip of what's going on. I would like to, you know, we are in Sweden. I am an immigrant. I have been so many years, so I consider myself Swede. Sweden have a fantastic form of activism that unfortunately is dying. It's building, buildingsverbund. It was a movement of the social democrats, of the worker, to build in each little place kind of the people's house. There you could see movies, you could see theater, you invite lecturer, you invite author, photographers, everything, all over the country. And this is dying. This was absolutely a form of real activism, cultural activism. It was not this kind of heroic, you didn't uh, end on the first page of the newspapers. It is a gray activism. But it is the most important activity because it's every day, years after years. Unfortunately, this form has been crushed by the neoliberalism, by uh, commercial need to sell the, the assets, the houses, the places, and so on. But I, I always try to remind people that there is a tradition of activism here in this country who, that did not accept that some people have the right to listen to a symphony orchestra or a string quartet. No. The workers and the peasants, everyone has to have the right. Or photography, or dance, or whatever. So, like you said, it's education, it's building, it's more than in Swedish, it's more than, it's like to build up. This is also a very important uh, point of view to look upon cultural activism. You touched on, on, on sort of political movements and political goals and, and uh, uh, certainly, the workers' movement was uh, has one foot in activism, and uh, like so many other movements, where there has been like, uh, I mean, activism just to pursue your ideas and such, but also uh, counteracting uh, even violently, which also happened. Uh, I mean, Malmo is historical in the sense that you had uh, the first uh, political. Uh, uh, well, I unintentional assassination of, uh, do you call them black feet? Uh, these these, these uh, people, straight breakers, uh, straight breakers in, in uh, was it 1906 or something like it? I mean, that's uh, quite a while ago. But, but uh, you, so you have that sort of, and the other, that's the violent aspect of it. But you also have the educational aspects of it, the, you know, the very, very, very strong educational center. Uh, and um, I would uh, maybe contradict you in a, in a way, saying that many of these places were actually uh, dying before they were dismantled, unfortunately, because I mean, I've seen these activities in, the, in well, in Malmö or anywhere, uh, the, the Folketshus and, and, uh, and, and, and how they were actually uh, 
pretty tired already in my childhood in the 1960s. So it wasn't really like, like that s sort of forceful activity where people were like uh, streaming in to, to seek knowledge. It was more like a nervously controlled little place where, where old ladies or someone were working and it was nothing, nothing much happened. So, so you could say also that the workers' movement has been going through different phases. Uh, but um, but it's still, uh, art and politics. Uh, Drew mentioned that, uh, that politics and activism is not necessarily the same, or even they might exclude each other because they are taking place in different spaces, mentally and physically and also legally. Uh, there is something called political art. And political art is usually and generally the same as propaganda, at least as it, when it comes in its most approved form, the forms that we know the best. And, and um, clearly, nothing of what you are dealing with is propaganda art. But how would you like describe your, your because you have uh, lots of important causes, is it important to you that your art stays alive when the cause has, so to speak, lost its um, momentum? Maybe because you've been very successful in what you've been doing. Uh, I mean, uh, or is it is it uh, is it important to cut it short, to make to 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 sort of create respect or, or or maintain a sort of divide between propaganda and art? Uh, uh, is it imp is the most uh, important aspect for you to propagate something, or it is the most important aspect actually to make art? In some sense, it's actually different spaces even where you show these things. Um, I'm not necessarily producing art. I'm I'm rewriting a South African history. Yeah, articulating my issues. I want to stress that there is. Um, a visual visibility of us in space. So I look at my work just beyond art, and it just happened that art spaces have been welcoming because there you're dealing with the non-convected. You're dealing with the people maybe who are curious and also who want to know what is going on in South Africa. I love my country, I was born there, I will die there probably, maybe not. Um, and I have a responsibility as a citizen of South Africa, you know. And the only way, or one of the fewer ways in which I could reclaim my citizenship, and also of those who are living their lives just like me, will only to write it the way we live it, you know? And I don't think that we should wait for someone to tell us who we are in our lives, uh, a propaganda, you know? We're not talking from, uh, this is not an imagination, this is our life. Uh, or our lives rather. And like I said, if there's any form of invisibility or any ways in which we are being bled in history, somebody has to take action, you know? And it did not start easy. I didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I just want to um, embark on, on, on um, visual history of black lesbians and also trans people. I had to think carefully. I looked at what was there in the library. I looked at what was archived there that spoke about LGBTI individuals in space. I, I listened and I read about how we were told that being black and being homosexual or transgender is an African. So I had to prove it to so many people by reading you know, the traditional codes and also and all the materials that confirm who we are in space, that we were actually African, especially South Africans, you know? So for me, maybe a person who come from uh, outside space or a person who do not believe that uh, we could take action, like we keep on talking about like act, action, you know, coming up with different forms, you know, of, of changing attitudes and changing spaces and places and sharing and distributing what we've already produced to help the next person who is like blank to get the grip or to show this, 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 uh, this work. And um, the, like I'd say, Europe and America, um, they've been welcoming 
because a lot of research has been done in Africa anyways. So to have someone like me and many other people who came before me sharing these documents from South Africa to abroad is a good way in which we could speak with people of the world. Looking specifically from a point of view where we had a lot of uh, activists from here and around the globe who help us fight apartheid. And I think that it is through a new generation of, of individuals that will help us to fight any forms of hate, to fight all of these hate crimes in order for us to negotiate a space and, and, and obviously, you know, um, desperate to live just lives, you know, where nobody would say, I'm tolerating you or I have a gay friend, we tolerate these people, I don't need you to tolerate me. I need you to respect me and recognize what I'm capable of doing and also see me as a person with a brain who is capable of rewriting this history that is bugging me. I love history. And I think the only way that I could do it will be through visuals. So it's not propaganda, it's no. life. <laughs> and it's rewriting history, so I think that's bold enough. Uh, how about you, Roy? You so seem eager, eager to, to comment on this. I'm always eager to comment. No, uh, I, I say I never, I think no artist uh, should speculate if it will be uh, left, when the cause is won, it will be survive or not survive. I think we don't have this capacity and I don't think we should, con we are, I am not concerned about it. I'm concerned about doing things that I think I have to do in the area of music or arts or politics. This is what I have to do, I do. Uh, if it will last long and it will be uh, alive after uh, the justice will uh, conquer the world, I will be very happy. If it's not, what can I do? I don't think I will be living there, so it's no problem. Uh, I think that uh, one of the ways of not relating to the art do we done by people who activists, political and artistic activists, is to call it propaganda. Even when it's not propaganda. They say, oh, it's propaganda. You want something else. It is not only art. As if somebody is doing something that is only art. It's not possible. We are human beings. We have feelings. We are we are bad mood in the morning and uh, sometimes good mood and sometimes we eat and sometimes we don't eat and sometimes we see injustice in the street that we react, sometimes we don't react. All our art is kind of a propaganda of how we see the world and how we want to convey it to other people. Uh, I, do, I don't believe this. Th I, I think this is many times it's used as a, as a weapon <coughs> against people who want something. Uh, I think instead you can say it's bad art. It's one dimensional art. It's art that uh, aesthetically it's not good enough. Okay, this I can accept. But don't, don't just say propaganda. What's wrong with propaganda if it's fantastic, well done, and it's a fantastic artistic... Uh, uh, look, look on the church, look on all the big masters of the Christian uh, tradition. They, all of them propagandists for Jesus and for Maria. They made incre Michelangelo, big propagandist. But it's good art. So it is not to do with the message. It's to do with how good you are or not good. Because there is actually propaganda, and there is actually horrible propaganda art we know from history, but that's actually very often uh, art which is speaking for the powerful to the powerless. And I would assume that I, actually what you are doing is, ca uh, is acting from a totally different power position as well. So propaganda is maybe the s form of art, good or bad. That is also something that uh, is a wonderful propaganda art that comes from a powerful position as well. But it still is, is a different, totally different standpoint where this comes. It comes from the powerful and is given to the powerless or the less empowered. But uh, how would you address this? Because you, you're also like, you're standing in a reality, you're taking photographs, and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, you know that these images will have, you, w once you present to them, they will have an afterlife. Well, I think, you know, many times I've been accused of or asked, you know, did you work together with Hamas? Did they, uh, for example, that's a real political question, you know, and I said, I, I never worked with them. But these, these are concerns. I mean, these are concerns when you, when I did the work, for example, with the private homes, for example, right? So it was, it was in war. I mean, the truth is always gone in some way and you can make mistakes, but you have to relate to them. 
And but this is more like almost like journalism or, or historical questions that you try to be correct. So I know, for example, I had a really wonderful, great picture of a kitchen which was burned out. But actually, the, it was shown to me by, by uh, someone from Palestinian Center for Human Rights. And then the owner came, and then he said to me, you know, I don't know if this was done by Hamas or if it was done by the Israelis. So this is like, <laughs> it's an interesting, actually, it's, a, it's an image and a, and a work of its own, right? So you could, you could have that because you have to... You have to keep your guard up. You can make mistakes, and if you make the mistakes, you have to allow them, and then they return into another discussion. It's really interesting, in the last work which I did about Black Friday, the attack which was on Rafa, this work which is now on Malmö Konstal, actually the timeline which is done by Amnesty, it ends with two versions which I really like. So the Israeli says that they say the soldier, he died, and uh, there was no chance that the Hamas doctors could keep him alive, right? But the autopsy is secret, right? And the Hamas, they say, well, they think that their soldiers, together with, with the Israeli soldier, were bombed to death by the Israelis, right? So uh, when you work in this kind of context, it's not really, <laughs> I mean, you're really trying to sort out the facts. It's been more like trying to work with like, some historical facts. And of course, then that is connected to, you know, whatever. If you read Edward Said Orientalism, about how this whole idea about the Orient came up and became academic because people were interesting and coming there. And of course, I, I'm, I'm being a part of that because I'm a photographer and I'm visiting the area, right? Many years after. So all these things come to an account when, when, when you work. And then um, I'm sure that depending on who looks at the work, we'll have different opinions. I have, uh, I have a feeling. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, and who can use it? Yeah, sure. I would like to f address a final question. That is, w I mean, w when you're leaving this room, you will be doing a lot of new work. And, and what is... Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Uh, um, I was already uh, on further, uh, yeah. But after the demonstration, or <coughs> maybe already in this dem demonstration, um, what is the most important goal for you as an artist, activities, activities uh, and, and, and uh, however you describe yourself, Dror. What is, I mean, your next step? What is the most important thing for you to do now and tomorrow? I must admit that what I would love to do tomorrow, from tomorrow, a long time forward, not to do anything else than sit at home and write uh, two compositions that I have started to, that I have so many other things to do, so I don't have time. and and a continuous time. I really would like to have a long and time that I don't have to, but uh, as I am, as a person, <coughs> probably this will not be the case. I want really very much to continue to do what I do, and I don't think I can choose between activism and uh, playing and making uh, visual arts. I think this is like, it's a part of me. Uh, the most, I think, one of the most important things, uh, I think, for us as artists, if I see, not about only me, for artists, is we must make it understood for the population of our countries that we are like them. We are like them. We have the same problems, we suffer of the same things, and we enjoy the same things. Variable on all of this, of course. And we are part of it. They look upon us as total like, kind of we are kind of a little group in the marginal of society, privileged artists don't uh, engage themselves in what's going on for the whole country and so on. I would love the artists to be more prominent in society, more prominent in the people everyday life, and not compromising on the form of the art. This is what I would like to do. This I'd like to speak with other artists and together to promote this kind of of work that will make art available to other people, to make people understand that we are with them and, and not to compromise uh, on the forms of the art, not to try to be populist or propagandist, but to make it art that will touch your heart and will unite you with the people. They will understand what we, why we do what we do, that we don't choose to do it because it's easy or because it's 
pleasure. It's because we have to do that. And how about uh, Ken? Uh, what is your next? What is your next step, Ken? <laughs> Is, is like you take a lot of steps at the same time. That's the problem, you know? <laughs> it's not like one step. It's like you need a little bit of life. I mean, it's been a very hectic summer making the exhibition and making the book. So that's been taking the whole summer. So I probably go swimming at 8 o'clock after doing uh, breakfast for my daughter. And then, uh, but after that, I mean, it's, it's um, so now it's return back. I mean, to the people in, in, in the people that I work with in Gaza, the Abu Khalil, who, who helped me, who was the man, uh, Amnesty's man who I stayed with, who took me, who was my man. I mean, I could never have done. I mean, I re-photographed 127 photographs of the people that were killed from the 1st of August until the 4th of August. And that is part of the exhibition, or 80 actually, but in the book there's 127. I mean, without him, I could never have done it. So I saw that he said uh, hello to me on, the, on, on Facebook and, and all that. So I will see that he will he will get you know like uh, the book back and i will speak to amnesty again i speak uh, locally to amnesty here in malmo to see we try to see if they can use the exhibition for something and then i have some i have workshops and then of course in the workshops you also spread the ideas because i talk about how i work so of course not all people find that interesting but some people maybe gets interested and says, oh you can do like this as well so it's it's uh, at the same time we all have, you know, projects that we are working on and, and continuing. So it's, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of everything. And uh, exactly where the next project go, well, one is on its way and uh, another is on its way, but I, I don't know right now. I think I need a little bit of a break, but it goes on anyway, just by, by living. So it ca the, the projects come to you. The things which are concerned, they come to you. And then, and then you do the work because you think it's necessary and for you, it's like a double thing. I mean, it's also, I think, through, I think that's important that, of course, we do this work because we want to tell it for, for, you know, for other people. We want more justice in, in, in society. But of course, there's also something within, with you, it's very, it's very clear. But there's also within every artist who works, who are concerned with something and identifies so much with something that we are willing to give so much time. And we are not actually thinking about economics because usually economically, we have to make the money somewhere else. Right? So if we have, what we have is, and that is kind of an identification with the other, which is necessary for activism, for art, etc. So I think that, that um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's my, my answer to the question. As long as I have this, uh, you know, concern and for other people and I can identify with other people from whatever, you know, gender or culture they are, then I will continue to, uh, to create work and, and use the time for that. I can so, sort of see an image of you because you're basically describing yourself as a rock in the stream. So it's not like, like uh, you are not cutting ahead. Actually, life is going past yeah. and, 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 and affecting you. Yeah. And you are affecting life as well, but not by attacking it necessarily. Yeah. But, but maybe that is the reason why one can uh, continue working for so many years. Because it's actually that th it's a whole, it's not only that we want other people to learn. I mean, we are learning by the work. So the thing by learning, or we, we, you feel alive. You mm -hmm. know, you feel that you learn everything is smelly. I mean, normally we, we smell a lot and we feel a lot when we are maybe up to like 25 or something like that. But things keep smelling and keeps turning around. And, you know, I'm, I'm usually I'm saying like this. Every time when I really can get, you know, like confused or see something in another light or, yeah. I mean, basically there is a sense of life which is important. And that life goes for, not only for me, but it goes for everyone. Right, so it's a, it's a kind of a touching inside and outside of the world. So by working like this, you see the outside, but you see yourself at the same time, and this is what gives the energy to do this kind of work. I think. Yeah, and finally, you, uh, where are you uh, heading? I mean, uh, returning to South Africa now, uh, I assume, and and, and uh, what's your next uh, step? Is there a next step, uh, second level, where you want to? to reach and work from, or, or is it just the daily struggle? Uh, I, and I'm going to Liverpool for another exhibition. But before I head there, I'd just like to thank um, Rasmus and Mathieu.
giving us the opportunity <laughs> to be here. I will, would not have been here if it wasn't for that invitation. Yeah. This young person, she's my soul of strength. Yeah. It's been hard to wake up with a lot of traumas and nightmares and thinking of what might happen to the people back at home simply because of who they are. And also to Malmo Photo Binyard for allowing us a space, just that space, to share our lives. I'm truly grateful. But where I'm heading to, uh, I'd like to live longer. I'd like to live in a space where I don't have to struggle or challenge or contest or speak out. I just want to live. I want I want to rest just like you, you know, longing to wake up without having to think that somebody might be killed somewhere. Um, we just continue to go to the spaces to learn, to educate people. Sometimes it's really not easy. I want to wake up in my bed, but then I had to be here to share our our work. Yeah, and also to say I'm grateful to all those people who trusted me with their souls and all who allowed me to photograph them. And I'm one of us, you know. Um, yeah, we just want to wake up into a free uh, South Africa where we could really enjoy our LGBTI rights without anyone being hurt or violated simply because of being. Um, but most of all, to see our faces and our voices, or visual narratives rather, be part of the educational system. Let people pick a book with LGBTI faces and life stories without uh, thinking twice or drawing any hate speech and say, why do we have to read about this or be aggressive about it? Yeah, so I'm striving to survive. I'm striving to survive. I want to live long and be like these guys and speak on history because I've been part of it. I have produced it. And to say to the next young person, I was once your age and I spoke in Malmo about these issues. Now you're free because somebody have fought for you, you know. But all in all, thank you so much, guys. Keep on doing it. Um, you're not wasting your time. It might not pay the bills, but the fact that you're doing it, it makes so much difference to most of us. Thank you so much. Lerato. Never give up. I'm with you. Um, yeah. And there is a collective of we are, yeah, women that I work with back at home in which we just want to change how things are done um, without so much aggression. We just use visual history. We're pushing it. We're producing visual documents um, to educate all the people in our societies and to say that um, women can. So we're producing those visual documents to further educate our upcoming generation because whatever that we're doing matters. Thank you so much to everybody for your time. Thank you. Thanks to you. And thank you so much, uh, Sanele, because I think that was...